our place in the universe. We live in the Milky Way galaxy, which is one of around two trillion galaxies in the observable universe. Our sun is one of around 100,000 stars in the galaxy. Our sun sits at the center of our solar system with eight planets orbiting around. Our sun drives the weather as we know it and we all love to moan about it. It does that by heating the surface of our planet. Our sun also drives space weather. The sun is continuously emitting streams of charged particles. And when these interact with the Earth's magnetic field, space weather is created. Space weather can be beautiful. When these charged particles are deflected by our magnetic field and collide with atoms and molecules in the Earth's atmosphere, beautiful aurora in the form of northern and southern lights are created. Space weather can also be very dangerous. Back in 1859, dark spots were observed on the surface of the sun, and we now know these to be called sunspots. What followed was an ejection, um, a coronal mass ejection, in which billions of tons of particles were directed. Only 18 hours later, they reached the Earth. And this coronal mass ejection caused our magnetic field to be temporarily compromised. The end result was that telegraph systems across the whole of Nor Northern Europe and America were disrupted. This event became known as the Carrington event. If a Carrington event was to occur today, the global damage to electrical and communication systems could be catastrophic. That's your mobile phone, your tablet, your laptop, your PC, power to your homes, schools, universities, hospital, industry, you name it. All these electrical and communication systems that we depend on so much could be at risk. The Carrington event occurred in 1859, and these events are predicted to occur about every 200 years. <coughs> Back in 2012, we had a near miss. The sun ejected a coronal mass ejection, which missed us by nine days. <coughs> so how can we predict these events? We need to understand the processes on the surface of the sun. We know that these coronal mass ejections are linked to sunspots. We know that sunspots contain molecules, more specifically, diatomic molecules. These are molecules with two atoms within them. We need to be able to track sunspots, and we know that sunspots, the magnetic field, is enhanced within them. So we need a way of tracking this magnetic field within sunspots. The surface of the sun is about 98% hydrogen and helium. But what's really, really fascinating about these molecules that have been found in sunspots is that they contain elements that come across from all across the periodic table, which is in this remaining 2%. So let me tell you about some of these molecules that have been found in sunspots. For example, there is chromium hydride. Chromium hydride is a molecule that I've been working on since 2012. It contains the transition metal, chromium and hydrogen, joined together to make a diatomic molecule. There's around about 80 of these diatomic molecules that have been observed. So as well as chromium hydride, there's other types of hydrides. There's also carbides, chlorides, fluorides, oxides, nitrides, sulfides, and many, many more. Diatomic molecules containing elements that span the whole of the periodic table. So how can we use these molecules? Every molecule emits a collection of wavelengths. You can think of these like barcodes. Different species emit different barcodes. For example, as is shown here. These barcodes are subject to change. So if you change the temperature, for example, the temperature here, 2000 Kelvin, is in red, is slightly different for a different temperature. 
If you have a hydride diatomic, this is manganese hydride, which is another of my favourite molecules. If you replace the hydrogen by deuterium, which is a heavy form of hydrogen, you get a shift in this barcode. What's crucial for sunspots is that these molecular barcodes are predicted to shift with magnetic field strength. And this shift in barcode depends on the strength of the magnetic field strength. So therefore, being able to detect these molecules and their barcodes and how they change with the magnetic field can tell us about how the magnetic field within a sunspot is changing. And we know that these sunspots are related to these coronal mass ejections. So how do we obtain these barcodes? We do this by calculations. This is high-level quantum chemistry calculations. But these calculations that a computer produces they're only theoretical. We need experimental data in order to refine them. And this is where young people can and have been involved in this work. Over the last two years, around 30 students, ranging from A-level to master's level, have helped collect experimental data from published scientific papers. This curated data is then used to refine these calculations, which produce these barcodes. So. I'll leave you for thought today. The next time you think about the sun, please don't look directly at it. <laughs> Remember, it's elements, it's diatomic molecules that contain elements from all across the periodic table that one day might help play a role in helping us predict when the next Carrington event might occur. Thank you.